Hello and welcome everyone to a new episode of Money Means Business. After an expanded meeting which took place presided over by um, Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli and a number of top executives topping the list of the economy circle in uh, the cabinet, uh, a statement or statements to be accurate were released regarding the Egyptian economy's recovery and the expectations that it's going to hit 6% when it comes to our growth. Also, there are the um, uh, reports uh, speaking about the new um, rules of imports released by the ECB. All this and more in a very special episode of our program, but we are going to start with a report regarding the cabinet meeting, regarding our economy's recovery, particularly after the COVID, or to be accurate, during the COVID-19 negative impacts on the global economy in general and on ours in specific we are going to be back with more with my special guest live here from NAL TV International Studios. The central bank decided to stop dealing with collection documents in the implementation of all import operations and to work with documentary credits only as of the beginning of next March. The central bank stressed that these measures come within the framework of the governance of import operations and the activation of the system of pre-registration of shipments which will begin to be applied compulsory. The central bank governor called on businessmen to expedite the reconciliation of their situations and not waste time in controversy that has nothing to do with the stability of Egypt's foreign trade and the soundness of its performance. The central bank's decision excluded branches of foreign companies and their subsidiaries and allowed banks to accept collection documents received for goods that had already been shipped before the issuance of this decision. Tarak Darwish, head of the Egyptian Exporters Businessmen Association, said that the central bank's decision is a positive one that will reduce the import rate and reduce the rate of US dollar exit from the local market which is in the interest of the Egyptian economy. The head of the Egyptian Exporters Association pointed to the necessity of raising the limit set by the resolution from $5,000 to $10,000 and that above $10,000 requires opening a documentary credit. The Federation of Egyptian Banks announced the issuance of a directive from the Central Bank of Egypt, excluding all incoming express mail shipments and shipments up to $5,000 or its equivalent in foreign currencies from the new import controls. The Central Bank also decided to exclude both medicines, serums, chemicals and food commodities. The Central Bank of Egypt directed all banks to increase the existing credit limits for import customers and open new limits for new customers in proportion to the volume of imports for each customer, in addition to reducing all commissions for documentary credits to be like the commissions of collection documents. The Federation of Egyptian Banks confirmed that the central bank's decision is a banking regulatory measure issued in line with the recent decisions of the Council of Ministers regarding the governance of import procedures and to complement the system of pre-registration of shipments. The Banks Association added that the decision aims to raise the level of goods imported from abroad to protect the health and funds of citizens, the governance of the foreign trade system, the protection of the national industry, and the preservation of the country's resources. Welcome back. Let's start immediately as we do have a lot to speak about. We are very much delighted to have with us live here in the studio, Mr. Osama Murad, our expert when it comes to economy and finance in this special episode, as I said. Uh, Mr. Osama, thank you very much for being with us, sir. Thank you for hosting me. 
and we are going to start immediately as I said we do have a lot to speak about and uh, when it comes to this press conference which was um, which took place after uh, this cabinet meeting which took place in the new administrative capital and presided over by the Prime Minister speaking in numbers regarding the uh, growth rate 8.3 percent in the second quarter of the current fiscal year and 9.8 in the first quarter meaning that we are going to reach inshallah six percent in uh, uh, the highest in the world of course we are not going to compare what would be the case if the whole world was not suffering COVID-19 but let's uh, let, let's speak uh, with what's going on on the ground with the ten, uh, with the tangible results we have how do you see these numbers sir it's a phenomenal growth rate it's I think it's the highest growth rate we had since 2014 mm -hmm. it's higher than the rest of the world and the emerging markets especially that all the markets are suffering so it shows the resilience of the Egyptian economy. Mm -hmm. um, nevertheless, we are cautiously opti optimistic as uh, part of the growth rate could be the higher, <coughs> sorry, the higher prices and inflation, but also that this growth is mostly government inspired or government dominated. So the private sector role in the economy is not as we wish for, but it's great that the government is able to step up mm -hmm. at the time when the private sector might be conservative or suffering from liquidity issues or whatever. So the huge growth and expansion in roads, in cities, in railways, in uh, monorails, in subways is definitely uh, spurring uh, a lot of growth. Besides our national natural growth rate, because of the population uh, growth. This is another uh, issue, but sir, let me start from scratch because we are uh, we, we are speaking to the layman in the street. I mean, we are not all experts when it comes to economy. What are the reasons behind showing this res resilient way of facing COVID-19? I mean, is it the um, reform program which we already implemented long before COVID, um, particularly November 2016? Or is it going into um, many uh, sides or many directions in the same time? I mean, taking into consideration that as much as the national projects are a priority, but also the SMEs should uh, have um, the, uh, the keenness of the, um, uh, the, the, the state to continue with, which is which? Well, uh, the fantastic thing about the economy, it's never one factor. So mm -hmm. it's always a combination of factors at a certain time. Mm -hmm. uh, what we've seen before, every time Egypt has uh, embarked and fulfilled uh, an economic reform program, which we did twice before, uh, we had a good growth rate after uh, the, uh, the reform program because the reform program structurally adjusts the economy mm -hmm. and then we are bound for growth. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have huge uh, government investment spending and this is a result of the reform program because the reform program was mainly cutting on subsidies mm -hmm. so we can invest. So mm -hmm. the government is now investing in infrastructure, in roads, in cities, in buildings and so on. So that is spurring uh, uh, growth mm -hmm. which is naturally very good. Mm -hmm. The SME and the business role is still not where we wish to because we had a lot of restrictive measures due to COVID and due to non-COVID. Mm -hmm. The other thing is Egypt handled uh, COVID uh, differently than the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe uh, at the beginning everybody was uh, joking we had uh, curfews at night and not at, uh, at the day and the economy was going and now the rest of the world is actually imitating us or the rest of the world is lifting mm -hmm. uh, measures so we're we're treating uh, covid lightly or to, we're treating covid as it's there to stay so mm -hmm. that is uh, a good thing uh, actually help the economy to grow and uh, continue but sir, I think what you're saying is already implemented all over the world and even with big economies you would find Canada, for example, today suffering or police where they're using tear gas to disperse thousands or maybe tens of thousands of people demonstrating against restrictions of COVID-19. Yes. Thank God we have not reached 
something like this. And here we are speaking about Canada, one of the biggest economy worldwide. Yes, because Canada and other Western uh, countries have taken, uh, in the beginning, a very dramatic approach to, mm -hmm. uh, to COVID. Lots of restrictions, which on paper look good, but ignore social factors yeah. and ignore human beings' need mm -hmm. to meet and see and greet and, uh, and uh, uh, tap on each other's uh, uh, back and give mm -hmm. each other uh, support, which is socially affecting people. We have lots of people who are suffering from depression because of uh, that, mm -hmm. people refusing to wear uh, masks and, and so on. So uh, the Egyptian approach, which was uh, a mix of different measures with an Egyptian and flavor, actually uh, turned out well uh, for the economy. Mm -hmm. And as said, having finished the economic reform program for three years, mm -hmm. helped structurally uh, the government, was mm -hmm. able to do more investment mm -hmm. and decreased our uh, budget deficit, which was exceeding the 10% and is now below 9%. Mm -hmm. So we are fiscally uh, stronger, able to do the investment uh, expansion but also able to invest in social uh, programs like uh, uh, dignity, uh, Takaful Karama, Karama or, or Decent Life Initiative, uh, our decent uh, life initiative, initiative. which yes. is targeting uh, the less... Uh, mm. uh, the most needy brackets. The most needy brackets and the uh, nano or uh, very micro uh, businesses and handicrafts. In fact, in, in all occasions, uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli, Minister of Social Solidarity Dr. Nameen al qabaj Minister of Planning Dr. Hala Saeed, each time they meet or each time even they go into an inspection tour or meet with people uh, on the ground, they spoke about that uh, as a first priority, as a presidential initiative which is going to continue on the ground to develop the countryside of Egypt in general, and not to be um, dedicated to specific areas. For as, as analysts, we always uh, watch the rhetoric of the politicians. Mm -hmm. So as you mentioned, uh, you will always hear every week, uh, decent life, mm -hmm. takaful and karama. You will, uh, since two months, you will hear continuously, 2030, 2030, Mm. So Egypt is not moving without planning or haphazard. You're reading my mind. There I was going to speak about the word sustainable. Because the word yes. sustainability, I think it's now one of the key words when it comes to anything and particularly to economic development. There is continuously a focus on a long-term vision and plan. Mm. And that's why uh, the government and the president is targeting uh, the most needy people. And you will hear for the first time this era is dedicated for Upper Egypt and for women. Mm -hmm. So you had the president dedicating a week to open factories, facilities, new cities and so on in uh, Upper Egypt because the decentralization, not only of the decision making but of the economy is extremely important. It helps uh, to uh, have less movement towards Cairo and the bigger uh, cities, people, if they find an economic uh, opportunity, will stay where they are and flourish where they are. And for the country to move up, it needs to move up on all areas, not to have a centralized area uh, booming. So there is a great effort being Amen done. Amen to that. And to add to what you're saying, sir, if you permit me, I'd like you to elaborate on um, the concept that with decent life initiative or with um, Takafun and Karama, this is not a burden on our economy. This is a way to integrate millions of people into the economic wheel, if we can say so. The beauty of numbers mm. is that can, you can read, you could not have done that before the economic reform program mm -hmm. because you didn't have the money to spend. Mm. The money you saved from subsidies, which were indirect subsidies which are uh, which ha don't have any contribution because if you give <coughs> cheap prices for uh, uh, bread and uh, other food stuff and, and oil and subsidized stuff uh, 
you do a, a cosmetic administrative price, mm -hmm. which disturbs the market. Mm -hmm. But having saved that amount, you're able to give back to the people who really need it. Mm -hmm. And those people, that money is actually spent, which increases consumption, which is one of the factors why the GDP is able to rise, because consumption is one of the uh, excellent triggers of uh, GDP growth, because that money is from hand to mouth. Mm -hmm. These people are needy, they get the money, they benefit, they spend on food, on clothing, and now recently even on housing. Yeah. You have classes which did not have access to decent housing now, who have uh, decent uh, housing uh, possibilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, since you mentioned that, nobody can ignore what happened with Al Asmarat, for example, how many Asmarats we have. Asmarat, Asmarat one, is just two, a, three, a very just successful an example. Uh, close example yeah. to us, mm -hmm. but you have in Alexandria, 30 we have or cities, more yeah. uh, communities and cities which are being no more slums, no uh, more unsafe uh, areas. Yes. Yeah, because as also the president said it more than once, we deserve to live in a better way. The Egyptians yes. deserve to be, to live in a better way. The, the president has reformulated. Uh, uh, he has his version of human rights. Yes, and and he has said that explicitly many times that he sees a priority human life that uh, for human rights, the ability to earn money, to have access to food, have access to clean water and so on. So he wants to fulfill the basic rights uh, first. At the time that the, the state is very keen to continue with infrastructure, with yes. mega projects, with land reclamation, with fisheries, with the, the, the city of, uh, with EG Pharma, the city yes. of medicines. And in the same time, to have uh, an exhibition like Tarathona or Our Heritage, for example, uh, inviting women from all over Egypt to come with their very tiny micro or macro uh, projects just to show their products. The difficulty we're facing now, there's so much going on that you actually, every week, you have a new trend, you mm -hmm. have a new initiative uh, coming up. So it's difficult to follow up, but it's great that uh, we're working on all this different This was my fronts. question. This is difficult to follow up, or this is the way we should have started long ago, and now it's just better late than never. Of course we should have started late, uh, <laughs> but nobody had the guts. Uh, the president, uh, <coughs> through the support he has uh, from the people, is able to take measures mm -hmm. which previous leaders could not take mm -hmm. or were afraid uh, to take. He has proven several times he's not afraid to take any drastic uh, measures. We have now free electricity prices, free gasoline prices, mm -hmm. free water prices, free food prices. So the market is dominated by supply and demand. Mm -hmm. This was politically not possible before, mm -hmm. but because we have a stable regime supported by uh, a lot of people, uh, the regime is able to uh, execute those sometimes tough measures Harsh, in the short but run, yes. mm -hmm. but they turn out positive, which same, I mean, if you just recall what happened in 2015 and 16 when people were afraid of the devaluation and uh, uh, the price increase and people were suffering and this would be disastrous and so on mm -hmm. uh, and people opposing the IMF uh, agreement where we would uh, borrow from the uh, IMF well it turned out to be better for everyone yep sir also we we can add to this that there is no room for corruption or there is no more for those who were really committing crimes and just to go en passant, as the French are saying. For example, in this um, a meeting of uh, the Prime Minister with the Economic Circle, the Prime Minister described building on agricultural lands as a crime against the coming generations, highlighting <laughs> the role of national media, of course, in showing the gravity of the damage caused by this issue. And um, there are many harsh or tough, uh, the law, um, the force of law, of course, by, for, by the force of law, of course, implemented on the ground to prevent this from happening. And this is one of, um, of, of the really um, um, 
mean crimes, if I may say, against our economy. Well, if you want to elaborate on that. Yeah, sure. The regime has shown that it's serious about that because mm -hmm. uh, all those measures look great on paper and they were done before by previous uh, regimes, but never there was implementation. But for the first time, we see that uh, mm -hmm. buildings who are violating the code mm -hmm. are being torn down. Mm -hmm. So actually people take uh, the government serious on that and I think people will abide by that. And it's, I see it as a, a dual crime or mm -hmm. three crime. You're and not only building on agricultural land and thus deprivating Egypt from a, a food source and uh, we should we then will replace that with desert land which might need more water. Mm -hmm. That's uh, uh, one crime. The other thing is you're building slum areas or uh, 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 unplanned. Uh, unplanned. So the yeah. infrastructure is uh, not there. And we are aiming to build buildings now. Presidential decree is all buildings uh, should have fiber optical cable. We will have, will be all uh, connected. Uh, we, the cap, uh, administrative uh, capital will be a smart city. The ring road will be a smart road. So we're moving uh, towards... New Alamein city, new Rafah uh, city, new Asyut city, new Mansoura city. Yes. We have smart cities yes. all over Egypt. But let's also um, talk about another dimension because this issue is, is big. I mean, the whole planet now, it's a small village. Uh, whenever there is a crisis between Russia and Ukraine, it may affect us here and affect our borders even. There are things which we cannot uh, separate an element from another. And here I would speak about the global inflation after COVID-19. How we can protect our economy from going through that or at least to minimize the global inflation impact onto ours. Well, the world is not worried about inflation. Mm -hmm. We're worried about something more dangerous. Which is? Stagflation. Okay. Stagflation is uh, that to the layman, we have inflation, but not, not as a result of, we have uh, uh, inflation, but we also have a declining or shrinking uh, economy or same demand. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very dangerous uh, uh, phenomena mm -hmm. because prices just increase, mm -hmm. but there is no more demand. Okay. So uh, this is what we're really worried uh, about. This is a way or another like a depression? Uh, it's the reverse of Rever a, a reverse of a depression. Of a depression. A depression yeah. prices uh, stay the same or yeah. go down, but there is less demand. Mm -hmm. Now there is less demand, less economic activity, mm -hmm. but prices are going up. Mm -hmm. And we, we are... We because are of logistics problems, because of COVID measures, because of... And we are aware of that. We and the rest <laughs> of the world are aware of that. Because today uh, there was um, uh, important meetings which took place between um, a World Bank delegation, which is here in Egypt for an official uh, visit, and they met with a number of our top executives and ministers on top of the list is a uh, minister of finance, Dr. Mohammed Ma'i. Do you think what we are saying, uh, we're included into the agenda of talks? Definitely. We are, we are one of the biggest uh, benefactors or partners to work with the World Bank. Mm -hmm. We have a share and we work with them. And Egypt is one of the largest beneficiary uh, globally. So the World Bank is looking uh, to Egypt as a success story mm -hmm. uh, working on development uh, with each other. Uh, our share of the global economy is not big. So we, we are not a dominating or deciding factor. We are always a recipient. Mm -hmm. But it's, that's why it's very important to watch what happens on the global landscape. This is it. We are mm -hmm. less than 1% of the global economy. Mm -hmm. So we don't affect the global economy, but we get affected by anything what happens. Rising uh, 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 oil prices had an direct impact on citizens in Egypt. We raised gasoline prices by mm -hmm. quarter of uh, a pound. Uh, luckily, we, do, uh, we took preemptive measures uh, for the Russian-Ukrainian uh, crisis mm -hmm. and secured enough uh, wheat for the coming uh, months, especially 
to bridge Ramadan where uh, demand Allah. naturally uh, goes uh, up. Higher. But you never know what happens mm -hmm. uh, globally and there could be a crisis, there could be an opportunity. So we always have to be uh, on the watch. We can't control the global economy. We can control only what we take uh, as uh, an activity. So you agree with me that it's one village and we cannot separate it's what's going on village. on the other side of the planet and our side. Definitely, it's a very small uh, village and with technology. I mean, if, <coughs> if the plans of certain companies uh, go right, and they will obviously uh, uh, go right, you will have cheap internet access globally mm -hmm. without need for uh, local infrastructure. So it looks as a threat to local telecommunications mm -hmm. company, but it's an opportunity because you would save a lot on infrastructure costs and have infrastructure. So there is lots happening in the world. Uh, the whole world, uh, we benefited uh, because of the logistics issues. Our mm -hmm. fruits and vegetables export went uh, up because we were able to shift faster to uh, nearby European uh, markets mm -hmm. because other markets had uh, issues. Also. We, we managed yes. our uh, supply yeah. and logistics uh, very mm -hmm. well. We did not have a single problem of lack of any single uh, product in Egypt since Corona. We've witnessed Europe suffering Thank from yeah. uh, toilet paper crises and medicine crises and, and food uh, uh, supply issues. Mm -hmm. we, we managed to bridge that without any uh, issues for luckily <laughs> The now. truck drivers <laughs> themselves, yes, yes. They, uh, they went to demonstrate in, in some of, of the countries you mentioned, sir. But I'm going also to speak about the IMF reports regarding Egypt, Fitch reports regarding Egypt. It's not only the uh, World Bank which spoke about Egypt this way, but right after the short break. Dragon Oil Company, wholly owned by the government of Dubai, announced its first new petroleum discovery in the Gulf of Suez, Egypt. The Ministry of Petroleum said that the initial expected oil reserves for the new discovery are estimated at 100 million barrels inside the northeastern region of Ramadan, with the possibility of adding a larger expected oil stock when starting the development plan and it is one of the largest oil discoveries in the Gulf of Suez in 20 years. The new oil field is the first discovery by Dragon Oil since it became an active player in the petroleum sector in Egypt after it acquired 100% of the British BP's assets in oil oil production and discovery concessions in the Gulf of Suez according to the statement. Mr. Petroleum Company receives the first of two locally manufactured oil tankers exclusively in Egyptian hands from the Alexandria shipyard. The Happy Tanker is 100% Egyptian with a length of 85 meters, a width of 15 meters and a height of 5.5 meters. It has obtained the DRS International Accreditation Certificate. The ship is an oil tanker that transports various types of petroleum products, specifically diesel. Data from the Central Agency for Public Mobilization and Statistics showed an increase in the value of Egyptian exports to Belgium, recording $411.6 million compared to $234.5 million during the same period in 2020, an increase of 75.5%. The value of Egyptian imports from Belgium increased by $1.6 billion during the first 11 months of 2021, compared to $937.1 million during the same period in 2020, an increase of 71.1%. The value of Belgian investments in Egypt grew by $246.8 million during the fiscal year 2020-2021 compared to $85.9 million during the same fiscal year 2019-2020, 
an increase of 187.3%. Engineer Mohammad Salahuddin, Vice President and Managing Director of the National Authority for Military Production. Engineer Abdel Munaim Hindawi, President of Al Masarra Company for Engineering Industries, Factory 45 Military, and Engineer Cristiano Musa, CEO of the Italian Nandi Renzo Company, signed an agreement to establish a joint company to manufacture components for gas conversion kits natural compressed liquefied. The Minister of Military Production stressed that the signing of this agreement comes within the framework of promoting steps to encourage reliance on the national industry, especially through coordination between all ministry state institutions, the private sector and investors, with the aim of establishing industrial investment projects to bridge the import gaps for a number of nutritious production inputs to serve all sectors developmental. Luxor International Airport received Nicolas Sarkozy, the former French president, who decided to choose the warm city of Luxor to spend a special holiday with his family. Where the former French president Nicolas Sarkozy chose Luxor to spend a special holiday with his family and to enjoy the charm of the pharaonic civilization in Luxor and the warmth of the winter weather. Nicolas Sarkozy's visit to Luxor this year is not his first visit to enjoy Luxor, as he spent a family vacation in 2007 in the Egyptian city. The report issued by the Central Agency for Public Mobilization and Statistics showed that the value of Egypt's imports of mobile phones declined by 10.5% to reach $1 billion and $471 million and $44,000 during the first 11 months of last year, compared to $1 billion, $643 million and $449,000 in the corresponding period of 2020. According to data issued by the Central Agency for Public Mobilization and Statistics, imports of mobile phones fell to the lowest level during last June to record about $76,477,000 compared to about $307,749,000 in the corresponding period of the previous year, a decline of 75%. The unemployment rate in Egypt decreased to 7.4% during the last quarter of 2021, compared to 7.5% in the third quarter of the same year. On an annual basis, the unemployment rate increased in the last quarter of 2021 by 0.2%, compared to the same quarter of 2020, which recorded 7.2%. The Central Agency for Public Mobilization and Statistics estimated the labor force in Egypt at about 29.653 million individuals during the fourth quarter of 2021, compared to 29.380 million individuals during the third quarter, an increase of 0.9%. Exports of insulating materials increased by 51% during the first 10 months of the year, the period from January till October 2021, to record $33 million compared to $22 million during the same period in 2020. According to a report of the Export Council for Building Materials, Refactories and Metal Industries, Al Mal obtained a copy of it. A report from the Export Council of Building Materials, Refactories and Metal Industries stated that Nigeria ranked first for countries importing insulation materials with a value of $5.7 million, followed by Libya with a value of $3.2 million, then Kenya with a value of $1.9 million and Vietnam with $1.6 million.
This was a wrap-up of the most important economic events which took place in the past seven days. With all our thanks to our dear colleague Manel Ibieri. Back to our episode and to Mr. Osama Murad, our economic expert. Sir, just before the events of the week, we were speaking about the reports which were released by huge or heavyweight economic international institutions regarding the Egyptian economy. The World Bank, which we which sent already a delegation in an official visit here to Egypt and of course the IMF is not an exception, Fitch is not an exception, SMP, you name it. How do you see those reports, sir? Well, <coughs> it's very natural that after an economic reform program everybody is interested and everybody is praising the efforts because it's not only Egypt, it's what can we uh, replicate around the world especially that the world is suffering uh, recession or stagflation. So we want to have success stories and what can be done uh, to replicate those efforts in other areas uh, of the world and also to ensure that it continues. Yes. Because we had before economic reform programs and we had success for one or two years after that and then we forgot about the measures and return to normality and then we drop again. So everybody wants that success story to uh, continue. So sustainability rises again. Of course, sustainability yeah. is key. Mm. Um, and uh, of course, in the economy, whenever you do something, you improve something, naturally you have other negative factors mm -hmm. uh, happening. So our foreign borrowing went up, our international reserves uh, or net foreign assets are not as uh, big as we used to have, but you have to choose your battles and your priorities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here we, we should mention what happened last week regarding the Egyptian Central Bank speaking about the new imports rule, rules which uh, are going to be implemented in March, meaning in less than two weeks from now. How do you see this move, sir? Well, I, I consider myself a liberal, so uh, I naturally oppose restrictive and administrative measures, especially on trade. You were mentioning global village, we're mm. a small world, so you don't want to restrict uh, trade. Uh, Central Bank's explanation is that that's part of the overall plan of uh, pre-shipment uh, registration. I'm not an expert in that system, but what I've seen is that uh, three major business associations and the Industrial Federation have sent an official uh, letter to the Prime Minister opposing those measures. Amen. Uh, uh, to add to this, I'd like to listen to you after these statements by the uh, Central Bank Governor Tar Ahmed. He urged businessmen to reconcile their situations and not to waste time in controversies that have no relation to the stability of Egypt's foreign trade and its sound performance. Well, uh, the central bank and the governor uh, say they will have no impact. He did other measures. Uh, uh, naturally, business community is skeptical because he gave measures, he gave instructions to the bank to increase credit limits and to speed up the process. Will the banks in practice follow those measures or not? And naturally, uh, uh, importing through LCs is more costly than using uh, documentary uh, collection. So that's a fear and more time uh, consuming. So with or against the, the complaint which was filed to the prime minister saying that the new rules could, number one, exacerbate supply chain problems, Two, damage competitiveness. Three, delay import shipments. Uh, damage competitiveness, I agree, because we're giving different treatment to foreign companies and subsidiaries. Mm -hmm. And that's not fair, and that's not uh, on equal footing. It's mm -hmm. giving a benefit uh, to uh, foreign uh, companies. Mm -hmm. uh, once you analyze that, you say that, okay, there, it's beneficial to import through documentary collections. Mm -hmm. So why are you uh, forcing all companies, all Egyptian companies, to use uh, LCs? There is another uh, issue. Probably we want to restrict or control uh, imports. 
uh, as the government is working on uh, stabilizing the trade uh, deficit, we need to increase exports, but on the other side, we also want to decrease imports. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Osama, I'm not good in numbers, but I am here with negotiations, with a way to compromise. Is there a way to compromise or to reach um, a, a point in the middle of the road? Well, uh, the, uh, uh, in business, it's all about compromise and having deals. Yeah. Uh, and, and probably the business association in their combined letter to the prime minister wanted some kind of negotiation, but the response came very fast from the governor of the central bank. No negotiation, this is it, deal with it, get your act together. Mm -hmm. So I mean, but I think that we are flexible enough to, to, to have some amendments on the road. I, I doubt. Mm -hmm. There are already many exemptions which will, which will create loopholes. Uh, in Egypt, how things work, people will find ways around. People will find ways around. Of course, under the umbrella if, of law. If, <laughs> if, yes, under the umbrella of law. If the details don't work, meaning the central bank is giving directions to banks and doing price decreases on LCs and increasing the limit. Unfortunately, we are running if, out of time. But if one this question, works, yeah. then this will be no wrong. What we did, or this move, um, we took it, um, um, I mean... We, we took the market by surprise. Okay. I mean, and that's, that's was that in implemented in other economies? I mean, we have taken... No. I mean, this is an experience which we are, which is brand new for us. It, it, we tried to do this once before, and we yeah. failed. This is we it. Had, this is what I wanted to, to hear. Meaning, and we know that importation can be through various measures, depending on the relation between the importer mm. and the exporter, and that's how global trade uh, mm -hmm. works. Sure. You cannot force, or you shouldn't force, trade partners which deal together for twenty years, mm -hmm. or which are agents of foreign uh, companies or importing spare parts, that suddenly they change their uh, way mm -hmm. how uh, they work. It, it does something artificial to the market and does some dis disturbance for the time. Let's wait and see. Tomorrow is another day. It's, it's a new decision. Uh, we've seen good decisions. We've seen bad decisions. We've seen, we have to wait it out and see. Mr. Osama Murad, I really enjoyed my time. I enjoyed my Same discussion. And uh, inshallah, we are going to meet you again in more episodes of our programs. You are an added value to our screen. Not Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And by this, we come to the end of this episode of Money Means Business. And we thank you for your time on International on behalf of my dear colleagues, Kamil Ali, Nermeen Nazim, and myself, Nermeen Abdurrahman. Many thanks for watching. Stay tuned only on our channel.